it says kilo newtons and after this video you will have much better understanding than probably 99% of the rest of the climbers what these kilonewtons actually mean and what forces are involved in real climbing falls and then I will explain why big big whippers are often much softer than small falls but first let's find out what this force I like to play with my Instagram followers so I decided to ask them what comes to their mind when we hear a word force half of the people said that it has something to do with Star Wars fair enough and then before you start thinking that half of my Instagram followers are really smart I have to say that majority of them didn't vote it at all so I imagine something like what is force Okay, but those who wanted to sound smart said that force is mass times acceleration, which is the formula that Newton, this guy, came up with. Oh, yeah. And that's why we measure force in Newtons, which to me is a little bit funny when you think about it. Imagine Newton. So we measure mass in kilograms, and we measure acceleration meters per second squared then we should measure force in newtons so to put this formula into perspective it's like one newton this guy is pushing one kilogram of mass and that makes that mass to accelerate by one meter per second every second so here I have a carabiner and if I put all my weight on it, like so, the question is, what's the force right now into this carabiner? So if we look back to the formula, we can say that mass is my mass multiplied by acceleration. What acceleration? I'm hanging on a tree, there is no movement, no acceleration. Or is there an acceleration? Oh, papa. Okay. So you've probably seen this experiment before. I have heavy object and a light object. And the question is, if I let go both of them at the same time, which one is gonna hit the ground first? Let's try. So yes, we fell at the same time because that's what gravity does. It makes objects fall at exactly the same acceleration of 9.8 meters per second per second. So when I'm hanging on this carabiner, gravity is pulling me down. But in order for me to not move down, there must be opposite force, which would be pulling me up. Here I have a spring, while the gravity is pulling the rock down, the spring is pulling the rock up. So the carabiner is actually like a very very stiff spring, which is pulling me up. The molecules of the carabiner when I'm hanging on it are being spread apart, but they like to stay together, so they kind of pull back. You can't see this expansion of the quick draw on low forces, but you can on big ones. And so it turns out that this carabiner has to accelerate my weight up at the same 9.8 meters per second squared, which turns out to be about 600 newtons. Yep, 600 of these need to hold <laughs> one skinny guy like me. Phew. Fuck. <sighs> okay, moving on. This quick draw says that it can hold up to 26 kilonewtons. Kilonewton is basically 8000 newtons. So it means that it could hold about 40 me. I wish I would have a clone machine so I could demonstrate this to you. And then imagine how many videos all of these me could create. 
So if you want to see us create more videos like this, click the join button. It really helps and I promise I will spend every single penny I get from you guys on buying a clone machine. Click join! <laughs> okay, so you can hang 40 me on one single carabiner. That's pretty impressive. Although there are things that you must know. First of all, all of these ratings are for new equipment. Wear and tear does not go into that rating. How bad is that? Well, I asked my friend Ryan from YouTube channel how not to highline because he has a hobby of breaking stuff. And according to his tests, most of the metals tend to last pretty well. Although with soft things, things are totally different. Black diamond sling with a 22 kilonewton MBS. What? What was the MBS on this? 22 kilonewtons? Yeah. Yep. A sling rated at 22 kilonewtons broke at 6. And here is another one. Woo. That's a great condition. Would not whip. No, not whip. I would tie my dog to this though. I wouldn't tie a very big dog to that. <laughs> Hold on. Let's see, how big of a dog could you have tied with this? Ooh, uh, Chihuahua? <laughs> yeah, so if you're one of these people who like to save money and use very old worn down slings, good luck. 24 kilonewtons. That did not stretch that much. Oh, guess, oh, guess. I saw. <laughs> Four kilonewtons. What the fuck, man? Four thousand newtons. Okay, how much does such sling can hold? Well, that's pretty easy. Just divide four thousand newtons by nine point eight, or if you want easier, by ten, and you get four hundred kilograms. That sounds quite a lot, no? Four hundred kilograms. Well, all of these conversions from force to kilograms that I have been talking so far are based on the fact that the weight is hanging statically. Once the thing starts falling, everything changes. So what you have just seen is a clip from DMM where they dropped 80 kilograms of mass and that broke a brand new Dynema sling. Now, my goal is not to scare you, it's the opposite. I want to bring the awareness that climbing gear is not magic and if you use it incorrectly, it might fail. Fun fact! Do you know this joke that climbers like to say when they fail on their climbs? That today is a high gravity day. Well, turns out that's true! Gravity does change from month to month. So. If you are one of those people who like to complain that today is a bad humidity or bad temperature, now you have a right to complain that today is a bad gravity day. Yay! Okay, let's see what happens when objects, like us climbers, start falling. That was a 10 meters fall. Let's see how much force such fall would generate to the climber. The formula for that would be similar to what we had before, except that we need to multiply this by the distance the climber was falling and divide by the distance the climber was slowing down. And did you actually notice how soft the fall for the climber was? So imagine driving a car in a highway and pressing on the brake gently while you come to a stop. No problems, right? Now imagine you're not driving so fast, you're in a city, you're driving slowly, but you slam on a brake. That would not feel very nice, right? So here is the first thing I want you to remember out of this video. The impact to the climber will always be the product of the distance the climber was falling divided by the distance of the slowdown phase. 
So let's calculate. The falling distance was about four quick draws and the slow down distance was about two and a half quick draws. And we get about 860 newtons. Or if we would replace her with a standard 80 kilogram climber, that would be about 1.3 kilonewtons, which is not much. Although this formula has a little problem because it will always give you the value which is slightly lower than it would be in real life. But showing you how to calculate more precisely would mean that most of you would probably just leave this video right here. But we don't need to do that because we can rely on real life experimental data. And who is the boss at providing such data for us? Hi, I'm Ryan Jinx and... And that's enough advertisement for you. What they did in this video, they put a device measuring the force on the climber and made a series of falls. <laughs> Sick. So most of the falls that in my opinion would be a good belaying example were below 2 kN. Now let's take a look at these two extreme examples. Climber on the left is 5 meters above the bolt, so that would be 10 meters fall, plus the slack in the system. The belayer probably has about 1 meter of slack and then there is probably one more meter of slack in between the quick draws. So in total we are looking at 12 meters fall while climber on the right is only one meter above the bolt. And let's say that the belayer is really afraid and he's going to give a very hard catch for the climber. So we are looking at two meters fall. So a massive 12 meters fall or a small two meters fall? Which one do you think is gonna be softer for the climber? Well, let's see. We know how much the climbers will fall, but now we need to find out the slow down distances for both of the cases. And that depends mainly on two things. First is the displacement of the belayer. On a big big whipper, the belayer will probably fly about two meters. While on a small fall, let's assume very common mistake for beginners, where the belayer just takes the slack out and belays very hard. And the second factor is the stretch of the rope. Rope manufacturers claim that if you put 80 kilogram mass on a dynamic rope, statically, like so, without movement, the rope will stretch 10%. And dynamic stretch, when you take a lead fall, is up to 30%. Well, up to 30% is not very helpful for us. What we need to know is the stretch of this rope from two to four kilonewtons force. That's where the lead falls are. And yet again, I was texting Ryan. So I'm gonna pull some dynamic rope to see how much it stretches. At first we thought it's gonna be very easy. Just go to the park, stretch the rope to different forces and measure the elongation of the rope. Well, sometimes easy is hard. When you stretch the rope to certain force and leave it there, the force will start dropping on the rope. The rope kind of just gives up. While this is very interesting, it's not critical for us. The only thing he needed to do is to pull the rope as fast as he can to desired force and measure the stretch. Okay. Oh my god. That's the seven mark. 6.9 meters. It stretches when you pull it, a dynamic rope to four kilonewtons. But then there is another interesting factor. Once you load the rope to high forces, it takes some time for the rope to get back to its original length. This is what's known as rope resting. And it was really cool to see this in action. See the gray gray getting pulled back slowly. Super interesting. Probably way more interesting to me than it is to you right now. So after he spent like four hours in the park pulling the ropes, the results were that on forces from two to four kilonewtons, the rope stretched to about 20%. Great, so let's use that in our calculations. On a big fall, we have 27 meters of rope in total. So that would be 5.4 meters of stretch. 
while on a small fall we have 5 meters of rope and that would be 1 meter of stretch. However, our Belair is panicking and taking hard, so he will take half of that stretch for himself, leaving only half a meter of stretch for the climber. And ta-da! The big big whipper will be 2.5 times softer for the climber than a small fall. Oh, I love fun facts! Here is another one. Imagine that you were climbing and failed, but humidity was good, temperature was good, even the gravity was good that day. You can still blame the moon. Negligibly, but truly, you weigh about a millionth of your weight less when the moon is directly above you. So if you want to send, climb when the moon is directly above you. You're welcome. I remember I was projecting this really long route of 35 meters and the first time I managed to link all the cruxes and arrive at the anchor, the moment when I was pulling the rope up to clip the anchor, my belayer couldn't see me very well so he just gave me a lot of slack. And on top of that, the bolt before the anchor was really far, really ran out. So while I was dragging the rope up, I lost my balance and took a fall. The wall is flying in front of me and I'm thinking, why am I still falling? Hmm, this is unusual. When I stopped and looked up, it was maybe 5 or 6 quick draws above me, probably about 15 meters of fall. But the fall was super soft, it's like riding an elevator. So here is another takeaway out of this video. If the climber is really high up, he has a lot of rope to absorb the fall. So as long as he doesn't fall onto something, the fall will be soft, no matter how you belay that. However, if the climber is not so high, he doesn't have so much rope to absorb the fall, then soft dynamic belaying is really important. And you can ask any light climber how many times they had their ankles broken due to hard catches. Okay, let's switch gears a little bit. Let's talk about friction. Because the more friction you have, the harder the fall for the climber will be. And here is a very extreme example of that. As you can see right here, we Z-dragged it. And so we're gonna have a lot of friction when I fall. And whoop, for science. <laughs> so when you have a lot of friction, the rope close to the climber stretches normally, but the rope closer to belayer doesn't stretch that much. It's like having shorter rope and heavier belayer at the same time. And although the force to the harness was only two and a half kilonewtons, a lot of the force went pendulum into the wall. <laughs> that's how we break ankles. So extending the quick draws not only helps you to clip and avoid situations like this, <laughs> but also reduces the impact forces for the climbers. Okay, let's circle back to DMM test breaking the sling. The Nima slings are very static, they don't stretch at all. And I hope that by now you understand that this sudden stop can create a huge forces. If not, ask somebody to slap you. This stop on the face will be basically what you need to understand. So let's make a very wild and probably very inaccurate guess that this sling would stretch to about 5 centimeters. So if we drop 80 kilograms of mass, the distance of 120 centimeters and the absorption distance is only 5 centimeters, we are looking at 19 kilo newtons. If that is not gonna break the sling, it's definitely gonna break you. Woo! If you're still watching, that probably means that you should be at least a little bit geeky. So here is a dessert for you. There is no gravity. Yeah? Objects don't attract each other. There is only space-time. You feel as though you're being pushed into the ground, not because of a force called gravity, but because time is moving faster for your head than for your feet. 
this and all the other resources that I used to create this video will be in the description. And now please go send some love to Ryan for providing me with all of his experimental data that I used in this video. So don't forget to subscribe and support our channels if you want to see more content like this. Click join!